السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو مائی ویڈیو سیریز آن سرچنگ الگورتھمس ان آرٹیفیشل انٹیلیجنس ان ٹو ڈیز ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ایکسپلور ٹو الگورتھمس بریتھ فر سرچ اینڈ ڈیپ فر سرچ بائی دا اینڈ آف دس ویڈیو یو ول انڈرسٹینڈ ہاؤ دیز الگورتھم ورک سی دیم ان ایکشن تھرو این ایگزامپل اینڈ لرن اباؤٹ دیئر کی پراپرٹیز لائک کمپلیٹنیس ٹائم کمپلیکسٹی اسپیس کمپلیکسٹی اینڈ آپٹیمیلٹی سو لیٹس گیٹ اسٹارٹیڈ In the last video, we discussed about different kind of searching algorithms like uninformed search, informed search, adversarial search, local search, constant satisfaction search, and meta-heuristic search. So first, we will start with the uninformed searching algorithms. And in the uninformed searching algorithms, we have breadth-first search, depth-first search, iterative deepening search, depth limit search, and uniform cost search. In this video, we will explore the first two search algorithms, breadth-first search and depth-first search. In the upcoming lectures, we will discuss the remaining uninformed search algorithms. Breath first search explores the graph level by level. It starts with the source node and visits all its immediate neighbors before moving to the next level of neighbors. Here is the algorithm. First step is initialization. BFS uses a queue data structure to store the nodes to be visited. Enqueue the start node. Step 2. Visit neighbors. Dequeue a node from the front of the queue and mark it as visited. Explore all unvisited neighbors of the dequeued node. Enqueue the unvisited neighbors. We will repeat the step number 2 until the queue is empty or the goal node is found. Let's explain it using an example. Here we have a graph that contains 9 nodes. S node is the starting node and G node is the goal node. So our task is to apply the breadth first search algorithm to start from the S node and reach to the goal node that is G. We will create a table like this that contains the expanded node and our queue list. We will start with the S node. Expand it, we will get A, B and C. Note that we have written S at the top of A, B and C to indicate that they are expanded from S. We will check if S is a goal node, node is not a goal node. So we will expand the next node in our queue which is A. After expanding A, we will get D and E and we will append them at the end of the queue. We will mark A as visited. Since A is not the goal, we will proceed further and we will then explore the next node that is B and we will get G. Please note that we haven't reached the goal yet. The G node is in the queue. We'll mark B as visited. B is not the goal. So we'll proceed and expand the next node which is C. After expanding C, we will get F and we will append F to the end of the queue. We will mark C as visited. C is not the goal. We will explore the next node which is D and we will get H. We will add H at the end of the queue. D is not the goal. So we will expand the next node which is E in our queue. After expanding E, we will get G node. We will append it at the end of the queue. The next node in our queue is G with the parent B. So we will explore it and we will test if it is a goal node. Yes, it is a goal node. And here we stop our algorithm. So now we have to calculate the path from S to G. So to calculate the path, we need to backtrack. So which node led us to G? It was B node. And which node led us to B? It was S node. So the path would be S, B and G. And to calculate the path cost, you will add the path cost of S to B and B to G. So 6 plus 2 equals to 8. Now let's discuss some of the properties of the breadth first search. Breadth first search is complete. It guarantees finding a solution if one exists, provided that the branching factor is finite. BFS is optimal if all edges have the same cost, as it always finds the shortest path. In BFS, both time and space complexity are exponential. Depth first search takes a different approach than breadth first search. It explores as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. Imagine it as diving deep into the path until you hit a dead end and retract your steps to explore the other paths. 
the only difference between the DFS and BFS algorithm is the choice of data structure. In BFS algorithm, we use Q data structure and use NQ and DQ operations. In DFS algorithm, we use stack data structure and we use push and pop. Let's apply DFS algorithm to the same example. Here the only difference is the data structure which is stack instead of Q. So we'll start with the S node and we will explore its neighbors which are A, B and C. We will put them into the stack. We will check if S is the goal or not. S is not the goal. The first element in the stack will be popped out which is A. We will explore A and visit its neighbors which are D and E. Please note that as a data structure is stack, we have put them at the top of stack. So A is not the goal. So we will expand the first element in the stack which is D. Once we expand D, we will get a node H. We will expand H and H is not a goal. And there are no neighbors associated with H. So the next element in the stack will be popped out. Next element is E. We will explore E and go to its neighbor which is G. We will push G at the top of stack. Now we will pop the top element which is G and it is the goal. So now we will stop the algorithm and no further expansion will take place. Now let's backtrack and find the path from S to G. We got G node from E and if we go to E node it was expanded through A and A node was expanded through S. So the path would be S, A, E and G and we can calculate the path cost by adding 5, 4 and 6 we will get 15. Now let's talk about the properties of the depth first search. DFS is complete if we have a finite state space. DFS is not optimal as it may find a longer path. DFS time complexity is exponential however its space complexity is linear. That wraps up our discussion on BFS and DFS. We explored how they work walk through an example and analyze their properties. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more videos on data science and AI. See you next time.